Donald Trump, as we all know, had made comments speaking about NFL players calling them SOBs. And we know that it set off a firestorm online. A lot of athletes were upset. They was calling out Donald Trump. And there was going to be a response through the NFL players on Sunday. And a lot of people was anticipating that. Now, I have looked at all the responses. I still didn't look at it on television, but I saw online clips. And as far as I was going to go with looking at the NFL, because I'm extremely serious about boycotting the NFL, I would not have my television on any NFL in my home. So we want to start off with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers, they were supposed to play the Chicago bears. And during the national anthem, they didn't even come out. So let's go ahead and roll that clip. Mars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so good. Is it your decision not to come out for the anthem? And what was your thinking with that? No, it wasn't my decision. Um, like most teams in the National Football League, uh, we didn't ask for this. Um, this was, was placed upon us by circumstance. Um, I heard rumblings of guys talking uh, during the course of the day yesterday. My contention was um, that we will not allow politics to divide us with football players, with football team. Um, if, if many of them felt like something needed to be done, I asked those guys to discuss it. And whatever they discussed, that you know we have 100% participation or we do nothing. Um, they dis discussed it for an appropriate length of time. They couldn't come to an understanding. Um, so they chose to, to remove themselves from it. Uh, they were not going to be disrespectful in the anthem, uh, so they chose not to participate, but at the same time, uh, many of them were not going to accept the words of the president. So uh, we decided to sit it out, uh, to not take the field, um, to, to remove ourselves from it, to focus on playing football, um, and so those were our intentions. Adam Lowe was okay. He came out. He was out of the tunnel because of like the Like I said. I was looking for 100% participation. We we're going to be respectful of our football team. Man, these are divisive times. Uh, in the United States, and it's a shame, uh, but it is. Um, but we're not politicians. Um, we're coaches and professional athletes. And um, if those of us are individuals choose to, you know, choose to uh, participate in politics in some way, I'm going to be supportive of that. Um, but when we come out of, you know, locker rooms, man, we come out of locker rooms to play football games. And to be quite honest with you, man, I didn't appreciate our football team being drug into politics this weekend. And I'm sure that uh, that's a global perspective. Um, but, you know, we're blessed to do this for a living. And so with that blessings comes responsibility. We understand that. We understand that we're given a platform that's a unique one. Uh, many of us are called to maybe do things that we wouldn't normally do because of that platform where, where people apply pressure to us to do things because of that platform. Uh, and the bottom line is, um, we chose not to play ball today in that regard. Um, maybe we will, um, but today we just said no. Before we get started with the commentary, we'll reach out to our supporters and viewers to help us get to our 3,000 member goal on Patreon for a minimum of $2 or $5 per month. And I want to thank every person who has joined us there because with your help, this is why the show has continued to keep going. Now. You look at Mike Tomlin, the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He heard him say that they were thrust into this, thanks to Donald Trump. Now, they wanted to go play football. You didn't hear about their players getting involved with any of that. But Donald Trump forced everyone's hand to take a position. And I will keep saying this throughout the commentary that Donald Trump has been one of the best presidents for black people so far now they wanted to make a decision as you heard either 100 percent participation one way or another they couldn't decide so they didn't even take the field and that scene alone of them not being on the field was taking a position and for me it was a powerful position you have to understand you got these conservatives and also a lot of the white supremacists that love football they want to watch black men run up and down the field, but don't like black people. They are losing their minds. They are crying. Some of them I've heard more radio shows this morning crying because they can't watch football the way they want to anymore. Talking about politics. Well, thank the president that you voted for 
that did this. This is his doing. It's nobody else's doing. It's not even Colin Kaepernick's doing. Now, the position they took, I love to see it. That was an outright rebellion that we've been needing to see. And I've been knowing that it can happen, but it took Donald Trump to do it. Now you had the one guy that's out there, you know, he had his hand on his heart and he's indoctrinated and he was, you know, in the military. So all oh, Fox news was propping this guy up, you know, but it's kind of amazing to me because Donald Trump and them same people on Fox news are deporting his people and calling his people all kind of names. That's why I don't understand how could you have any allegiance to a place where they just kicking your people out. But you know, there are shucking and jiving sambos in every group. Now let's go on to the next one. LaShawn McCoy with the Buffalo bills. He's very interesting. Now I want to roll some clips of him. Now he was highly critical of Colin Kaepernick and I want to show you the video that he's criticizing. We're going to go to what he did on Sunday and then his comments after what he did. Uh, I mean, this is a lot going on. I think, uh, the whole Kaepernick situation, I don't know. I mean, in this country, you can believe what you want, and, and it's freedom of speech. So, if guys want to stand, you know, they can stand. Um, I think maybe they could choose a better platform to state their beliefs. You know, and one thing I learned about just here is that uh, in America, is that people, their followers. You know, if you, some people that you ask about these different topics, you know, they'll they'll uh, they'll say what they heard. You know, not what they actually know. Uh, even with the Kaepernick situation, you know, it's it's a lot more than just um, he's not he's not on the team because of if he doesn't want to stand for the national anthem. I think it's more than that. That may have something to do with it, but I think also has a lot to do with his his play. You know, I don't, I'm sure a lot of teams would want him as their starting quarterback. You know, um, you know, and then this that the chaos that comes along with it. I mean, it's a lot. I think as a team trying to win and not have a distraction on the team and um, I just think that as a player there's certain players that can be on the team with a big distractions you know and there's other players that they're not good enough or it's worth it I think his situation is not good enough to, to uh, have him on the team with all the the attention that comes along with it Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, the, the flag, the national anthem means a lot, um, you know, to me, to my teammates. Um, we had a long meeting uh, this Saturday night, and I was very bothered um, by the comments of our president of this country. You know, it's, uh, as a president, you're supposed to lead us, you're supposed to bring us together, you know, you're supposed to lead this country. Um, you know, and I can't stand, you know, and support something where our leader of this country is just, is just acting like a, a jerk, you know, um, angry and upset about NFL players protesting in a peaceful manner. A lot of different, I won't, you know, go to different um, areas and subjects, but, uh, you know, in this country, a lot of different things are, are going on. People are protesting in a violent way, where if a guy wants to take a knee or wants to express himself in any different manner, he has that right, you know. And and the biggest thing is that it's in a peaceful manner, you know. So that really bothered me, um, you know. And I think us as a as a group, as a team, you know, we want to display that hey, we come together as a team, you know, and show that to the world that you know. No matter how different each other person are, we could come together. You know, simple as that. I know you had uh, reacted when uh, there was a question about Colin Kaepernick a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. You said it may not have been the best platform for him to mm -hmm. use. Yeah. How do you reconcile this? Because, well, at the end of the day, man, it's, you know, the good, the good thing about this country is you could do what you want, you know, freedom to express yourself, you know, and I felt that, hey, 
if that's something that he wanted to do, it's perfectly fine. You know, um, at the time I thought I wouldn't do something like that, and then when you hear different remarks and comments um, from our leader, from our president of the United States, this is a, a great country. You know, people strive hard to get over here. You know, they do a lot of different things to get over here for a reason. Um, and when that your, your, your leader, your president, you know, makes different comments, it just I mean, it's hard for me to, to respect, you know, and trying to represent something that's, that I don't believe in. Now, what happened from the time he made the first comment about Kaepernick saying that he's not worth it to the point that he took it further than getting on the knee? He started doing his warm ups in front of everybody. He didn't care about anything. He was doing this thing. Now, you heard him in the post game conference what he had to say and how he was not pleased about Donald Trump. Understand there are people that are getting involved with this because of Donald Trump, but rest assured this whole situation is not about a flag. It's not about a national anthem. It's about police brutality. It's about police killing black people wholesale unarmed and going home to eat a sandwich. It's about white supremacy. And it's about racism. We want to make sure to center it. What it's about It's not about a flag like these Caucasians who are upset saying it's about including Trump himself. Now, if LaShawn McCoy all of a sudden came to a realization that he got off his shucking and jiving ways to get involved with a protest because this man disrespected him as well, because rest assured Donald Trump was only coming after black athletes, no one else. He wasn't even this angry and upset in Charlottesville when his friends, the white supremacist terrorists, killed a white woman. He wasn't that upset and wasn't that bothered. He sure wasn't cussing them out. So you have LaShawn McCoy that made all these greasy statements. Now he's out there protesting against what Donald Trump had to say and getting involved with the same thing that he felt that wasn't worth it with Colin Kaepernick's actions. Now we focus on the next one. Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis has been one that's been taking pictures with Donald Trump. He's been a supporter of Donald Trump. Now I want to roll a short clip of Ray Lewis criticizing Colin Kaepernick. If they really want to help you, man, they'll pray for you, brother. All right? They'll lead you the right way and stop encouraging you to be caught up in some of this nonsense. The battles you fighting, brother, people way before has been fighting these for many, many, many years. Now, Ray Lewis. You was out there on Sunday on your knees. Now I thought that he could do that a lot better according to how you were speaking about Kaepernick. He need to do this other places outside of the football field, but yet you got on your knees. Now you could say, I was just praying for everybody. Don't matter. You was out there on your knees. No matter what your excuse was going to be with that. You was out there with those players. And some people, when I pointed this out, I had a person tell me, well, if Ray Lewis, if you think he saw the light, why are you pointing it out? Because we need to have a hard stance on sellouts and sambos. You can't sit up there and all of a sudden say, oh, uh, I, I see the light now. I'm going to do like what made you do this? I want to hear his response. I want to hear it because what the, the owner told you to do that because it was going to start hurting his pocketbook because I've seen owners all over the place out there with the teams. And one thing I did not like with this whole situation is locking of the arm, standing up. No, 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 no. Take a knee. That's what Kaepernick did. It wasn't about locking no arms. You still uh, standing up for the national anthem. You're just halfway doing it. You're not making a protest in that manner. But Ray Lewis, come on, man. You've been going hard in the paint against Kaepernick. You even went on TV saying that the reason the Baltimore Ravens didn't pick up Kaepernick is because his girlfriend sent a racist tweet. And I can't stand when y'all use the word racist and not even use it in the proper context. The tweet that she sent had nothing to do with to say that her race was superior to anybody else's. She was just calling you out for the shucking the Sambo coon that you are. I mean, it was accurate. I mean, she posted your picture with the owner. With Steven and, and, and uh, Calvin, same thing. You all did the same picture. So we, what is the, so racist about that? Which is that it has nothing to do with superiority, right? Now, Ray Lewis is out there doing this. And the last person, 
Now, Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboy owner. Now, it was reported that he told his players if they go out there and take a knee, they're not going to be on the team very long. He made sure to communicate that message to everybody. And what changed with Jerry Jones? Jerry Jones, and we're going to play the clip of this, took it a step further more than all the other owners. Let's go ahead and roll that clip. The Cowboys players wanted to show unity, but they were very adamant about wanting to separate that message from the national anthem. Sean? All right, Lisa, and as they take a knee collectively, boos can be heard from this sellout crowd in Arizona. Now, when Jerry Jones originally said this to the players, I'll say, oh, okay, so Jerry Jones siding with a white supremacist, uh, Donald Trump. But also, Jerry Jones gave Trump a million dollars for his inauguration. So I guess he started feeling that heat come on him. And to the point that he got out there and got on the knee with the whole team. Now, no other owner did that but Jerry Jones. So you mean to tell me that you guys in social media and also the athletes have made a billionaire get on his knee. One that was adamant to tell them not to get on the knee, but yet he was out there with them doing that. Don't tell me that social media has no power or social media has no influence because you guys galvanize very well on social media. The athletes are finally opening their eyes to see who they really are in their position. It's quite funny because at one point in time, LeBron James himself, we called Trump a bum. A while back, he was asked about Tamir Rice right there in the city of Cleveland. And he's like, I don't know nothing about the case. I had to find out about the facts. Didn't know nothing. Now, all of a sudden, LeBron James is speaking up too. Everyone is speaking up with this situation. And Donald Trump has galvanized black people. But they constantly have some things that's being said with this whole situation. And it's time to start calling out this racism and white supremacy in the area of black men in sports. They keep saying these black athletes are ungrateful. They kept saying that word ungrateful. Who are they ungrateful to? Because I never hear you say a white athlete is ungrateful. Never hear that. It's only the black athletes. They should be happy that they are afforded an opportunity by this country so they can make millions of dollars. Why should they worry about that? Their talent got them to where they're at. You acting like you gave them a pass to go play football. Those guys work very hard for that. And their talent is carrying the NFL. Their talent is carrying the NBA. Not the owner's talent. The owners can't do crap. So why are they being ungrateful? If anyone should be grateful, it should be the owners of those teams that they actually have employees that can help them make money like they're making hand over foot with football. They're always talking about black people shouldn't be protesting like that. They should do it another way. Every time we have something to say, we're supposed to do it another way. If you get in the street and you protest or somebody say black lives matter, whatever you want to say in the street, that's wrong. If you take a knee, what Kaepernick is doing, that's wrong. Okay, so which one is it? No, the fact is, you don't want black people to say anything. You want black people to continue to have race soldiers murder our brothers and sisters wholesale. You don't want us to speak up about it. You just want us to take it. Let me let you know something. I know it's hard for you to understand. I know that the concept has been bred into you ever since you were children and so on, but we aren't your slaves. We aren't. We have an opinion to what happens to us. And if we feel like standing up against something, we would do it. Your opinions are mute to us. We don't care what you think. We're not sitting up there trying to explain to you how we feel. We're not calling your opinions. It doesn't matter to us like that because you worry about your little hurt feelings that you can't play football. When our brothers and sisters are being buried every day at the hands of these race soldiers, then you guys sit up there and support them. I'm talking in the way of if the shoe fits. If that's not you, I'm not talking about you. 
I'm talking about the lives that black people have to deal with in America, dealing with state sanctioned murders of our brothers and sisters. And then you always come up with your same lame excuse. Well, what about black on black crime? And I can say you say, what about white on white crime? What about 84% of whites ki are killed by whites? But you don't talk about that. You never talk about that at all. But you always so worried about what black people got going on. That's the only thing I want to say. You can't compare criminals to police officers. And if you are comparing criminals to police officers, then you're really making our case. They nothing but criminal thugs and a badge when you say that. The fact is, equality is going to come one way or another. Now, one thing is Sister Fannie Lou Hamer said, either you be equal with us or you're not going to have peace. You're not going to have nothing. It's, just, it's at that point already. See, going on the generation of the turn of the cheek black people, going on the, the generation of the black people that sit up there will endure your spitting, endure your cuss outs, endure your burning down churches, endure, 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 and be peaceful. And nothing has happened for us. So that didn't work. It didn't work whatsoever for us. So now you have to take a different approach and a different stand and more of the Malcolm X type of stand because you look at Dr. King, y'all talk about him peaceful as he was, and you still put a bullet in that brother's neck. So don't tell me nothing about, no, you guys should do this and, and understand something. Even Colin Kaepernick did it peaceful, peaceful, quiet. But the fact is you don't want black people to call you out. You don't want black people to ruffle your feathers because you know, good and well, you know, you know, you know, you know that, what happens to black people is wrong. And you know, good and well, you would not want to live the lives of black people because if you get a taste of what black people get, you are losing your mind. And you know that you losing jobs and now you, you just losing your mind. Police are starting to kill you and now you're losing your mind. But we've been telling y'all about this. Oh, now black people, we get it. Why are you getting it now? Because they're doing it to you. We've been told y'all these police got too much power. The police go too far. Y'all supporting people who's murdering citizens or not even having due process or a fair trial. No, I mean, the more y'all support that, the more they're going to do it to y'all. And the fact is y'all the one with most of the guns. So they're going to really amp it up against y'all more than anybody else. Y'all don't even see that coming. Some of you do. Some of you got a mind to see it coming, but a lot of you are so oblivious because you are sitting up here, setting your ways to protect the status quo of white supremacy. It's that simple, but whether they are protesting for the right reason or not, I love the scene that it had. I love to see the shock waves sent all over this country. If it wouldn't be for Donald Trump, none of this would have never happened. Once again, Donald Trump has been the best president for black people. And he ain't been in there four years. I can imagine if he's in there eight years, what kind of unification black people may have because of the things that Donald Trump may do and say, this is very interesting times to live in dealing with the presidency of a Donald Trump. But, we need to pay attention, keep our eyes open. You know, we can always keep our eye out on Trump and what he got going on, but let's take this moment to unify and get together not only to fix our community, but make the changes finally we need to make in this country for future generations for all of our children. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video, like the commentary, and subscribe for my news stories.